Good morning. I'm going to make a very short video uh, this morning. I think I'm just going to make it in one part, although there's a lot of information, but some of which is pretty redundant, so I'm going to skip a lot of it. Uh, we're going to talk about the um, uh, collets, uh, mainly ER32 collets, but also ER16 collets. Um, this is this is a uh, a bit of my uh, collet, let's say collet chuck paraphernalia. Okay, consisting of um, uh, ER16 collets, ER32 collets, um, and three uh, ER32 uh, uh, collet chucks and one ER16 collet chuck. So um, the I have other call it paraphernalia but this is what we're going to talk about this morning um, <clears throat> some of which is junk uh, to be honest with you so um, don't think that if you buy a collet chuck and some some collets that you're going to have a more precision setup because that's not true um, anybody that tells you that is uh, unless you spend an awful lot of money I suppose I think the collets are probably, uh, for the most part, pretty good. Um, they have some um, uh, pretty uh, uh, precision um, specifications. Uh, however, I don't think the collet chucks are, are uh, that concentric. So anyway, w with that said, um, I'm going to uh, switch over to the lathe. And we're going to look at a collet chuck that I purchased from Banggood that is um, uh, ER32 collet chuck. Um, and the shank is an MT3, Morse Taper 3. So we're going to talk about that mainly this morning. And maybe we'll get into talking about the uh, same type of collet chuck with an R8 shank that goes into the mill. Um, so with that said, um, what I'm going to do here is, I, I, this is really not meant to be a review because I actually haven't looked at these myself. I just received the, uh, the MT3 uh, ER32 collet chuck uh, in the mail, I think it was yesterday, so I really haven't looked at it myself. But I do know um, what my lathe can do. And so we're going to talk about that um, before we talk about anything else. So I'm going to move the camera over to the lathe where I've got a clock set up um, on an item that is chucked up in the three jaw chuck. Um, rather than go into all the testing and everything of the uh, of the spindle itself, uh, let me move this. Let me move the camera over there and. Um, and I'll zoom in when I need to. Uh, so there's the setup right now. And rather than take the chuck off, the chuck has a back plate, okay? And that back plate mounts to the, the spindle flange. So um, there there is two registers involved. The register on the back of the chuck and the register on the back of the um, uh, back plate. So, um, I suppose those registers, in order to to um, to interlock, there's a few tenths of um, a thousandths in there. That so there is a little bit of play in there. Um, you can work with that if you, if you need to. But basically, for some reason, this this uh, three jaw chuck seems to be pretty good. Um, some of these chucks have a tendency to run out quite a bit but this one seems to be pretty good so I'm just gonna start there um, I will tell you that the the spindle on the lathe is within tenths so tenths of a thousandths so it's very it's pretty pretty concentric so um, I've checked that in the past to, to see what it is so anyway I've got just a piece of uh, tool steel or something chucked up in there that's that uh, seems to be pretty good, and um, so let me um, let me move you in there, and we'll take a look at this. 
and just see I'll just show you what the run out is with this I'm gonna I got it uh, I gotta zoom in otherwise the the glare from the lights um, cause some problem so uh, the camera's not pointed exactly uh, uh, exactly at the at the clock but uh, it's pretty close um, I gotta leave room for myself to walk around the tripod here so um, let me just show you what the uh, what the run out is maybe I can just turn on the lathe well uh, let's see Okay, there's there's the run out of the uh, of the spindle and the chuck and the two back plates, everything mounted together, right? So so it's a, when I look at it here in the in uh, my viewer looks like I got about a half a thousandth uh, run out, which is damn good in my in my estimation. But um, it may be a little bit more than that, but it's that's that's about what it is so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this setup down I'm gonna pull off the chuck in the back plate and I'm gonna put the um, I'm gonna mount the uh, MT3 collet chuck in there so let me um, let's let's shut the lathe off now And I'll just uh, let me zoom out a little bit. I suppose I could turn the camera off and on, but hopefully this is not going to be a super long video. So there's the there's the Kalachuk right there in the background. Let me zoom in on the um, the lettering. It's upside down, but you can see uh, it's an MT3 ER32 with an M12 drawbar. And um, comes in a little box. You can see that. So well, there it is. Um, that's what we're going to mount up in the in the chuck. And then we're gonna, what we're going to do. Actually, what I I have a piece of um, I have a piece of uh, a dr uh, drill rod or tool steel that that I'm going to chuck up in there. And that's nine sixteenths diameter. <laughs> so the one the one benefit of these of these uh, ER thirty two collets um, versus like let's say the R eight collets in the mill is that they have some leeway. In other words, you can chuck chuck up some slightly different size diameters in the same chuck or the same collet. So that's that's the benefit in my estimation or one of the benefits so anyway with that said let me uh, let me break this down real quick and um, it should only take me five five minutes or so to pull the chuck off and and get this um, uh, call a chuck set up in the spindle and we'll take a look at it I haven't looked at it so we'll, we'll we're gonna look at it together and see what the run out is I'll be back in a minute okay we haven't done a thing. All we've done is uh, mount, take off the chuck, and mount the the MT3 shank into the spindle. So now I'm going to zoom in on the clock, and we're going to see what we got here. Well, the best thing I think to do is do what I did last time. Now I cleaned the bore real good. I put the shank in there. I tightened up the draw bar, and um, I inserted the collet and cleaned that bore out real good. And I just got a piece of tool steel in there, and um, we're gonna we're gonna start the the lathe and see what the run out is.
Okay, I've already zeroed the clock and we're kind of at an angle there so it's a little bit hard for you to tell maybe what I should do yeah not much not much I can do there I, gotta, I can't move the camera too easily so uh, unfortunately but I will tell you that let me, let me get in there where I can see it myself okay we're running out two and a half thousands so now with the three jaw chuck we were only running out one half of a thousand or five tenths now we're running out two and a half thousands so I'm not sure what I can do to improve that um, and I'm not sure what another call it might be, might do I'm not sure of that but um, that's the situation and I was afraid that might be the case because uh, I've already tried the R8 ER32 call it chuck in the in the mill and I have exactly the same situation um, the mill the run out on the spindle in the mill is about um, maybe about less than a half maybe just tenths of a thousand just like the lathe but when I put the the R8 ER32 collet chuck in there and use the same collet the um, uh, six, uh, nine sixteenths call it. Um, I have the same thing about two and a half or three thousandths run out. So, to me, that said, that's the best it's going to do, and there's no sense going into a lengthy, a lengthy video. Uh, in the past, I've used these ER16 collets for different purposes. I have an ER uh, R8 ER16 um, uh, collet chuck for the mill and when I need to get into a tight space and I don't have enough z-axis room I'll switch to the collet for a drill bit or something and uh, that's helped me in the past I've never actually checked the run out of that particular collet chuck so I, I have no idea what it is and I use also the ER16 collets in the in the little TIG micro lathe so and in the micro TIG micro mill and again I really haven't checked the run out I've always assumed that it was more it was better than the chuck <laughs> boy I, I think I was probably mistaken um, so anyway that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you uh, let me um, let me shut off the the lathe <clears throat> we'll talk talk a minute about a couple other things that might be important if you um, let me swing around here to the where I have the paraphernalia stacked up here oh there you go now I will say that um, also I this I purchased this uh, this chuck and this just mounts directly to the back plate on the lathe it's terrible it's worthless I just throw it in the junk pile it um, it's it's about I don't know it's at least it's at least the run out is at least uh, four or five thousands it's uh, not wonderful uh, so the other thing is is um, when if you purchase one of these um, you'll notice that on the chuck itself there's there's a flat here okay so you can uh, tighten up the nut okay all these chucks I, you notice I have three uh, ER32 uh, spanners there uh, for the uh, the the, um, the cap on the chuck and uh, but you need a you need something to hold the flat here that's fairly a, a fairly large crescent ranch uh, like a let's say a 10 inch crescent ranch that won't get it it won't work so you need something that opens pretty wide or you need a spanner that that'll fit that that's 37 millimeters I found out and I do have a adjustable wrench that fits it 
But um, there are several companies out there that make adjustable wrenches that have extra wide jaws. And um, Channel, uh, Channel Lock is a company that has extra wide jaws. And also, um, uh, there's three or four of them. Uh, Crescent Ranch has one with extra wide jaws. This one I like best, and uh, so I bought this some time ago actually. And it has a short handle. It's only an 8 inch long uh, wrench. And it opens up to over an inch and a half. So if you can see I have it set at 37 millimeters right now. So that's what it takes to, to tighten up the cap. So you, 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 need, you need that and I, don't, I didn't find any open end type uh, spanners that, that do that. So I'm, of course you can, you can probably find one for, for big money. But <laughs> anyway this, this works really good. And so and this is handy for a lot of things. Um, so it's it. Uh, I, I thought I'd mention that. And that's about all I have to say. Actually, I'm I've uh, I've been going around with this ER32 thing for for a while, um, and um, I haven't had good luck with it. So if any of you guys out there decide you 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 want to call it Chuck, uh, you might. <laughs> That, you know, none of these manufacturers uh, specify anything. They won't tell you what the runout is or what the con concentricity is of these chucks. They just tell you they're precision chucks. So, take my word, that doesn't mean anything. Because um, I can get more precision out of the uh, the old three-jaw chuck on the mini lathe. So, um, so, that's a little bit disappointing in, in, in my opinion. So, anyway, I'll call off now and get this posted so hopefully this is helpful to somebody uh, I may do a follow-up video if I run into anything that any way to improve the situation but at this point I've been fooling around with this for a while now uh, except for the this particular chuck that I've got on the lathe now and I haven't been able to get any really really good results so it could be that it could be the collets um, are not are not wonderful either but you know, worst case on collets is about five tenths, so I'm not sure. Um, I have fooled around with these collets, and they there is run out, um, and it could be that much or more, uh, for that matter. Uh, that I'm not sure of. So, in that in that respect, this video is sort of incomplete. But okay, with that, I'll call off now. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.